Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, is just uh, different kinds of types. Um, so let's talk about like an integer or a string. Um, here I'm at the REPL, and I could say like val x uh, has type integer, and we'll assign it the value one. Um, we could also say like val x's plural uh, could be type um, sorry list of integer, and we'll assign it the value is one two three. Um, and so in each of these two cases, um, both x and x's uh, have a proper type. They have, um, you know, a, a type assigned to them. You know, here x is uh, int, and here, of course, x is, is a list of int. Um, so if we call these values proper types, types that can be applied to an expression in our programming language, um, the question becomes, like, what do we call list? Um, so if we have a list of integer, that's something that can be applied to x's. Um, but what is just list by itself? Um, and so we, in type theory, um, or in type systems in general, we use a notion of um, kinds, K-I-N-D-S, uh, you know, a kindedness to our type system, or to our types. And in the Scala REPL, we can do that by um, using this uh, colon K syntax. This is a REPL command where I'm asking the REPL to do something. So this is not Scala syntax, right? Um, this is a, a command to the, the REPL. And I can ask, for instance, what's the kind of int? And I get back this um, you know, message that says int kind is A. Um, and I can ask the same question for what's the kind of list. And you can see it's telling us um, lists kind is F of A. And if you're familiar with like Scala's uh, subtyping variance support, you know you know the plus here is like covariance. We're not going to talk much about variance today, so you can ignore that. Um, the the important thing when we look at um, int and list in this example is that int, um, since it has a kind a, um, it's a proper type. Whereas list um, is not a proper type. It's got this this higher kinded kind, this f of a. Um, the idea being that, you know, in order to actually turn this list into something that we can use to type expressions, we're going to have to stick an A in, right? Um, so we can never write like val y's of type list equals something. There's no expression that could make this true um, because list being a higher kinded type um, cannot possibly uh, be the type of an expression. So, um, so types like list that take one argument, we're going to refer to today as type constructors. They're kind of like a function that operate at the type level that if you apply them with a proper type, we get a proper type back out of. So you can sort of think of list itself as a function that takes int as an input and returns this proper type list of int, if you will. All right, so um, we can write like some function foo here, um, and we can make it generic over some set of proper types. Um, so let's say we have this function foo. We're going to take an x of, of value of type a. We'll take like a y of type a. Um, and we'll do something with these. We don't really know what. Um, in this case, we're taking two, you know, two values, x and y, uh, and we have two proper types. But what if we wanted to write an, um, a, another function bar where we could pass in um, two uh, applied types? Um, I mean, so still proper types, but we want them to be the result of applying a proper type to a type constructor. So basically, like we want a polymorphic function that could be called with two lists, or with two options, or with two um, uh, you know, sets or, you know, et cetera, two vectors, right? So we just want to say, um, we don't care what the type constructor is, um, as long as you've got two of the same type constructor. So we'd write that um, in this way. Um, we're going to require two type parameters now. We're still going to require A, but we also need to um, ask for the type of the uh, type constructor we want. So we're going to call that F. And um, this is the syntax we use in Scala. So we have two type parameters, f and a. 
for the F type parameter, we're not actually like this is not an existential type here. If, if you know if you're familiar with existential types, it's not what's occurring. All we're doing in this case is saying F is a type constructor of one argument. So F could be list or option, but it couldn't be int. That's what that syntax says. And um, then we can write our function very easily. We'll just take x of f of a and y of f of a and um, do something to implement that function. So um, in fact, I want to not throw an exception. So I'm just going to reassign that to null for a second. Um, just, so to show you that this actually works, we can say like uh, call bar of list one, two, three with list one, and that works fine. Um, we could do it with uh, sum one and sum two, and that works fine. Um, we can't do it with uh, sum one and list one, two, three. Um, that doesn't compile because we're using different type constructors in each of those two positions. And our bar method, our signature required the same type constructor in both positions. Um, and we certainly can't do it if we just ignore type constructors completely and just like bar one comma two. Um, well, something fancy is happening there, but typically we wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, um, so let's go to the REPL now and talk about um, functors. And we're actually going to write them today. We'll derive uh, the full definitions of functor, monad, and applicative. Um, so um, a functor, let's start by setting up an import. Ooh, um, so oh, I have a very basic um, SBT project here, by the way. Um, Scala's version is 2.11.4, um, using two compiler plugins, which we'll talk about as we uh, get going. Um, and I'm using the simulacrum project. We've looked at that in the past, but it's just going to make um, some of our definitions easier to uh, write. Uh, so I'm going to create a new file, functor.scala. OK. And um, what uh, a functor is going to be defined as is a uh, type class that abstracts over type constructors that can define a map operation. So um, here we have to find a generic type, right? With this trait functor is defined generically over some type constructor. So we can define like a functor for list, but we couldn't define a functor for int, right? Because this again takes type constructors just like our bar method did at the REPL. Um, that's all that syntax is saying is that um, we're abstracting over an abstract type, you know, a type that has a, a one type parameter. And our map method, um, we're going to define here. Um, it's going to take two arguments uh, or two type arguments, A and B. We'll take uh, an F of A. So we're getting F from our functor and we're getting A from a generic parameter to map. We'll also take a function from A to B, and we're going to return an F of B. Um, that's half of the definition of functor. Um, so in, in Scala, the way we uh, look at a functor is that um, it abstracts over a type constructor that lets you map a function from A to B. Um, and you know, in order to convert an f of a into an f of b. So I say that's half of the definition because um, the other half of the definition is some set of rules that this map definition must comply with. Um, and let's um, write those rules down so we're extra explicit about it. Um, so I'm going to write them down in a separate trait. And we're going to call these laws. Um, and there's two laws for the for this functor definition that we have to worry about. Um, the first we're going to call the identity law. Um, and the identity law will um, actually let's do it this way. That's fine. Um, so we're going to say the identity law. We're going to need a couple different type parameters, f and a. 
And if you give us some f of a as input, um, what we're going to say is that um, calling, um, well, getting a functor for f and calling map, passing f of a in, and passing the identity function here as the argument um, must result in uh, the input f of a. Um, so this syntax here is not going to compile. I just made this up as we were doing this, right? Um, we want to be able to call this map function, the, the map function here on line five. Um, we want to say, like, anytime we map this identity function over um, an f of a, we get this, this as a result. So we need to get this somehow. Um, and in order to get that, we'll just ask for it implicitly uh, here. So this is our first law. Um, here we're just taking a, an instance of the functor for our f that we're dealing with. And we're just requiring that um, you know, this is true. Um, again, I, I kind of invented this triple equal here. For now, we'll just say equals equals and just use um, Scala's built-in you know, equals method that, that delegates to like object equals from the JVM. So at least that much so far should compile. Um, let me just double check. We haven't done anything silly. Good. Okay, so that's the first functor law, just that if we um, map a function that does nothing, it just returns its input, we get back the same input. Um, the next function law is a composition law. Um, and we're going to need a bunch of type parameters for this one. So we need our f again, because we're, we're dealing with a specific type instructor. We're going to need a, b, and c. Um, we're going to need three different arguments, an f of a. Um, we're going to need a, an f function, which is from a to b. We're going to need a g function, which is from b to c. And finally, we're going to need our functor instance again. And the general idea of composition is that um, we can either compose f and g uh, together and apply it as a single function, or we can do it piecewise. Um, so for example, we're going to say that calling f.map of f.map of f a f g must be the same as calling f.map f a f and then g. Right, so we can either hook f and g up together to yield a new function that goes from a to c, that's what this would end up being, and then map that directly over f of a to turn that into an f of c. Or we could just um, map them piecewise. First map the f over f of a, giving us an f of b, and then map the g over f of b, giving us an f of c. So um, that's really all there is to a functor, that if, um, if you can define an instance of this trait for some type constructor here, um, and then implement you know, map such that it adheres to these two laws, then you have a, a functor instance. Um, so let's try to do that. Um, let's define uh, in the companion object, we can define some uh, instances for functor. And the first we'll, we'll do is uh, one for the standard libraries list type. So here uh, we can we can um, parameterize functor by the list data type. That's legal because functor, remember, requires a type constructor as an argument, and list is a type constructor. I'm just going to steal the definition of map here. And we're going to inline list everywhere list shows up. 
And of course, this is very easy to implement for the standard library list because um, it has a map method already on it. And we can implement it just like that. Um, and all of the, I shouldn't say all of them, but, but a lot of the standard library collections have this same property. So for example, or for example, we could write the same thing for option. Um, and the implementation ends up being the same because option defines a map method. Um, so let's go to the REPL and try this out. Um, uh, so because we've defined the list functor and the option functor as implicit values in the functor companion object, we can just get them by um, asking for them implicitly. We can explicitly ask for them implicitly. Uh, by saying, give me a functor of list. Oops, I spelled that wrong. There we go. And of course, we uh, get the instance we defined. We can, on that, say map uh, list one, two, and three with the function um, that just adds one to an integer. And we get back two, three, and four. Uh, we could do the same thing. This time I'll do it inline. That's going to challenge me to spell implicitly right again. Uh, we'll ask for the functor of option. And we'll add one to that. And of course, we get some too. Um, so far, um, there's not a lot of uh, point in doing this, or, or rather, like, what's the point in, in abstracting away this map operation? Um, if we wanted to write code that generically mapped over um, containers, the Scala Collections Library has a way to do that, right? We've got traits like. Um, traversable or gen traversable or gen traversable one, siderable, right? There's a bunch of like really high level common traits that all the collections share that we could use if we really just wanted to um, map over things generically. Um, so let's try to define a functor instance uh, for something that's not a collection. Um, and so the general idea here is that we're going to define a functor that maps over the result of a function. Um, so function one, we can we can write down as a type, as a proper type, as um, a to b, like that. Um, but we don't want a type constructor. We can't define a type. Uh, we can't define a functor. Sorry, we don't want a proper type, right? We need a type constructor. And we can't define a functor for a proper type. It doesn't make sense. Um, so really what we want to do here is say that we're defining a um, functor for something that changes the output type here, this, this B. Um, so we still get a function that takes A as input, um, but we're going to change this output type via the map function, via the map implementation. Um, and so we can do that by replacing B with a question mark. Um, so a arrow question mark ends up being a type constructor that when you apply a proper type to it, you know, let's call it x, you get back a function a to x. Um, now the other problem we have here is that a isn't defined anywhere. Um, I just I just typed the letter a here, but of course that's not defined as part of this val. It's not defined as part of this object. Um, so this isn't going to compile. We're going to have to um, ask for a as a type parameter. And vowels can't have type parameters, so we're going to have to change this vowel to a def. So we're going to call this um, uh, the function one functor. It's now a def parameterized by some type a, and it is going to give us a functor that lets us vary the, the output type here.
And I'm going to take that same definition of map, and I'm going to replace all uses of option A, in this case, with um, A uh, arrow. Um, well, that wasn't bad, use of names. Um, let, let's, let's back up just a little bit and say this parameter A, I don't want a name clash here, so I'm just going to call this X. So we're going to put X there, we're going to put X here, and we're going to put X here. And now what we have down below is um, when we had an option A, we just took the type constructor option and applied A to it to get option A. Here we have an X arrow question mark, so we're going to apply A to that to get the function um, X arrow A. And same thing here, since we should we have option here on the output side, we had option B, we're going to apply B to our um, type constructor here and get X arrow B. But now our implementation isn't the same. There is no map method on uh, function one. Um, so um, what we want to do here is return a new function from x to b. So when it's given an x value as input, it returns a b value as output. And you can see we just have two functions here, x to a, and we have a function a to b. And so we could just compose these together uh, to create a function from x all the way to b. Right? We just did that in the law up here when we compose these two f and g functions together. So we can certainly do it down here since it's um, just different variable names. So we'll say start with fa and then call f. And that would be our implementation of functor for function one. So let's try that at the REPL. Yeah. Um, we're going to say implicitly uh, functor of, maybe we'll say um, int to question mark. We're going to fix our a type here, or x type here, sorry, to be int. And we get back um, a, a, you know, a functor instance. And then from res0, we could say map. And maybe our uh, first function is just the, f um, the fa that we're going to pass to map is the function that um, adds 1. And we're going to map um, a function that adds 2 over it. And we get back uh, res1, a function from int to int. Um, and you know we can look at the way we're doing this. We're saying really just we're going to compose the output here. So if we stick a 5 as input, we should get 1 added to it and then 2 added to it. So res1, sorry, res1 of 5 should be 8. So anyway, that's just our first example of a functor that uh, is not a collection, right? Functors do not define, I mean, sorry, um, function ones do not define math functions. Um, I haven't set up all the law testing to show that these are um, lawful. But if we tested identity and composition for arbitrary values of FA, given these three definitions, you would find that all of them do, in fact, um, pass these laws for every possible value you, you dream up. Um, there are other functors, I mean, there are other implementations of, of map that you could write in Scala and get it to compile that wouldn't pass these laws. Um, and the simplest one is uh, set. Um, we can define a series of derived operations off a of functor. Uh, so for example, um, one operation we could define is called lift. Um, we'll define it again as generic on A and B. Um, and the idea here is that uh, we can take a function from A to B as an argument. And we'll return a function from F of A to F of B. So here we're lifting the pure function A to B into a function that's executing um, with, with values wrapped in this context. Um, and how could we implement that? Um, all we can, you know, we can implement that completely in terms of map, given that we have these laws that are true. Um, 
the way we'll do that in this case is just say um, we're going to um, return an anonymous function here. Um, we'll have uh, fa as input, and we'll just delegate directly to math fa f. Uh, let's do one other. Uh, we could define a function called as. The idea here is that you give us an f of a, and you give us a b. And we'll return an f of b. And we can define that as um, mapping the constant function uh, that returns b over f a. So by, wait, by, when, I, um, when I say the constant function, what I mean is our f parameter to map will ignore the input value and just return b as an argument. And actually, let's define one final one. Uh, let's call it void. Uh, void will take an f of a as an argument and return an f of unit. And we can just define that as uh, calling as uh, with the unit value. So for, for composition, um, I'm, I'm confused. Like, is that saying that, you know, you can't, that if you, for any given f of, for any given function f, if there doesn't exist any function that you could write for g that would do the that would basically bring the set back to its original form, then it's not true. Or is it only for like does the law only pass or fail for that one set of f and g? No, yeah. So it doesn't have to for composition. It doesn't have to get it back. Like you don't need a you don't need an inverse. G does not have to be an inverse of f. Um, it's just that whatever you get. Um, whatever whatever the result is of applying them piecemeal, it must be the same as applying them, you know, as a single composed function. Um, and yeah, the examples I was doing at the Ripple were more, you know, were, were, weren't designed to to address the the piecemeal notion there. Um, they were more dealing with with non inverses, and, and that was incorrect. All right. Um, the other thing I want to do is that, like, we're, we saw that um, there's a couple things that are annoying about working with this functor definition. Um, one is that, you know, we were we were pulling these instances in implicitly. Um, so we had to use that implicitly method at the REPL. Uh, I'd like to define some syntax to make that a little easier. Um, the other thing is that this is very, uh, th these function definitions aren't very scholar-like in the sense that um, it'd be nicer to be able to like think of calling map as a function on this f of a object. Um, or like calling as, for example, on this f of a object, or calling void on this f of a object. And that doesn't always work. Like in the case of lift, this is not an f of a, so it's a little bit weirder. Um, but at least for the, the functions here that start with an f of a, it'd be nice to think of these functions more as just, um, you know, enrichments or, or extension methods on an f of a. Um, so the way we're going to get that both of those things is by annotating this with the at type class annotation. We're going to pick that up from Simulacrum. So uh, let's do an example now of that. Um, so by adding that annotation, uh, now we can just say, give me a functor for list, or give me a functor for option. Um, that's just doing the same thing as the implicitly thing. It's just saving us a couple characters. Um, more importantly, we can do this now. We can say import uh, functor dot ops dot underscore. That's going to give us extension methods. So now we can do things like list one two three uh, dot void, and we get back our list of units. 
Um, or we could do um, list one through th two, three dot as uh, 10. And we get back three tens, right? Um, you can see that the as method and the void method are both structure preserving in the sense that like if we've got a list of three elements, we're getting back a list of three tens. We get back, uh, or we start with a list of six elements, we get back a list of six tens. Um, so like when I first started, personally, when I first started using these major type classes, it was more about these functions than it was map. Right, like map was a map is a um, useful function, but it's defined in the collections library. I was trying to abstract over collections, but I really just wanted uh, the derived functions because there's some nice conveniences here. Um, it turns out what makes the derived functions work, as well as, as well as a bunch of other things, um, is the fact that the map implementation is law abiding. And if you have map implementations that aren't law abiding, you can't always make these things work in the right way. All right, so I want to do um, something else with functors. The next thing I want to do with functors is um, compose two of them together, right? Like uh, down here when we wrote the laws, we did this f and then g example. Um, we composed two functions together to, to create a new function. Um, I actually wanted to compose two functors together. So we're going to do that um, here. So I'm going to add this method compose. Um, and it's going to take a type argument that's a type constructor, g. And since I said we're composing two functors together, I'm going to require that g is a functor by defining an implicit parameter called g of type functor g. And so when I say they compose, what I'm saying is that we should be able to define a functor for f of g of question mark. Um, it turns out this, this uh, is going to push the limits of what we can do with this question mark syntax. Um, so the, the way we actually have to write this is uh, like the following. So we're going to say it's a functor for some type, fg of x, where x is a variable. Um, because this is, uh, you know, this, this lambda um, here, uh, basically lets us introduce this x as a variable. Um, and since this is only one variable, overall, this acts as a type constructor. And hence, it'll, it'll work OK with our typing of um, functor. And to show that uh, that at least compiles, we won't implement it yet. We'll come back in a second to implement it. Let's um, go to the REPL and start compiling again. You can see that compiled OK. All right, so now let's just take this type, kind of a scary type that we just wrote. So let's just take it and say new one of those. And let's steal our map definition. But actually, rather than copying and pasting it, let's type it back out. We're going to have map AB. And now here, we've got this f of a. But remember, f in functor is the type of functor you're dealing with. And down here, this is our crazy type of functor. Now, thankfully, we don't actually have to type that all out. Um, we can just write FGA because we're applying A to our functor type here. So we can just write out FGA as that first argument. Um, the next thing we need to do in order to make this work is um, or, or, or in order to, to, to implement this, really what we want to do is map over the outer f, and that's going to give us a g of a, and we can map over that g of a. Um, but in order to map out of the outer f, we need some reference to the functor for f. And like we're defining that, this compose method, inside the functor for f. But if we use like this, right, to say like this.map, um, we're going to have a problem because this.map is going to point to this map function here. 
So we can just introduce a name for our outer context. Like in Java, we would just write something like outer.this, right? Or we would write um, functor.this actually in Java. Um, in Scala, we can just do that by assigning a name here to our outer this. We're just going to alias this to the word self. And hence down here, we can write self.map to get reference to the f functor. And when we do that, we're given a g of a as an argument. Now we have a functor for g here. That's what this, this g variable is. So here we could write g.map g of a. And now we just get an A. Well, we've got a function from A to B right here. So we can just um, write uh, F of A to get our B. We've got some mismatched parentheses, but otherwise that should be all. So we're just nesting maps, right? We've just nested two maps here. Um, you can see that compiled. And if we go to the console, we could say, um, let's take the functor for list and compose it with the functor for option, as an example. Now we get back a functor that can map over um, list of option. So this is already much more powerful than anything the standard library can do, the standard collections library can do. Right? So if we have um, x's, Right, this structure comes up quite a bit, like a list of options. Um, and now we just want to add one to every value. If we did x's.map underscore plus one, we have a problem, right? Because plus um, isn't defined on option. So then, of course, Scala is silly and decides, oh, since it's not defined on an option, by calling plus, you probably meant to convert it to a string first and, and then add a string to it and do string concatenation. And so it gives us this wacky error message saying it found this int one, but it wanted a string. When really all it's doing here is saying, like, this map is giving you an option and you're trying to treat it as an int. But with our res zero up above, our composed functor, um, this example works fine. We can just say map over x's, add one to each entry, and it applies that add one function just to the, uh, the sums inside the list. Right, so we haven't even gone very deep into the definition of a functor, and uh, you can already start seeing things that are not possible to do with just the standard collection library. Oh, um, yes, that's a great question. Uh, so the question is that Lambda thing, you know, what is this? Um, and for that matter, I didn't, didn't mention this either, but uh, we used like this question mark type down here, X arrow question mark. Like neither of those two things are Scala syntax built in. Um, so, you know, in order to define, like let's look at this one first, down here in line 40. In order to define a functor for a function one, um, we have a bit of a problem. We can't just put um, like function one here, right? I mean, function like that that x arrow, like x arrow b, for instance, is just syntax sugar for function one x comma b, right? Um, but if we wrote out function one x comma b, uh, we have a proper type. And functors, of course, need type constructors of one argument. So if we wrote out just function one, we now have a type constructor, but it's a binary type constructor. It's a type constructor that takes two arguments, the input type and the output type. So we seem to be at a bit of a uh, by, uh, you know, or impasse here. Um, we could write x comma question mark which is basically what we did. And then we applied the um, syntax sugar that, that Scala provides for um, dealing with functions by writing this in line as x arrow question mark. Um, but like I said, this last this, this question mark thing is not valid Scala syntax. So in order to do this, really what we're talking about here is partially applying the 
um, types in a type constructor. So let's go to the REPL for a minute. Um, we can partially apply types, I'm sorry, we can partially apply functions in Scala. Um, Right, so here we have add three, and we could say, for instance, add three of uh, one, two, underscore. Um, we can sort of say that. Scala gets a little picky about type inference. Um, but if we help the compiler out, we can do that. And now you can see we took a function of three arguments, and we fixed two, the first two arguments to one and two, and we let the third argument vary, and we got back a um, partially applied uh, function, res4, where if we said like three, you know, we get six, we say four, we get seven, right? Um, we could do like, we could reference add three as a curry function like that, you know, with, with none of its arguments filled in. Um, you know, Scala has some limited, the point here is that Scala has some limited uh, syntax for partially applying functions with values. So if you kind of lift from the value level up into the type level, um, if you consider list as a type constructor that we apply into in order to generate the type listed in, um, the question is how do you do something like function one um, and apply like an input parameter here, A or X, but leave this one empty. And like I said, the question mark thing is not built into Scala. So how are we going to do it? Well, um, if anyone's familiar with type lambdas or have seen type lambdas before, um, that's the technique. Um, the idea basically goes like this. Um, uh, we're going to try to do this for function one, right? And I'll use the function one, the name, to make it easier to uh, read. So we're going to open friends. We're going to open brace. So by doing an open brace in, in a, at a, as a type, we're really now defining a structural type in Scala. And inside of that structural type, we're going to define um, a type alias. We'll call it L. And it's going to be parameterized by a type A. And we're going to assign it equal to function one from int to A. All right, so we've just defined this type alias as like function one with int stuck into the input type, you know, the first argument. And some, you know, L of A is just representing function one of int A. So we'll close off that structural type. Um, now we'll close off the parentheses. And then we'll use something called a type projection, which you do in Scala via the pound sign, to reference the type member L of that structural type. Um, and that's typically what type lambdas look like. Um, so they're really ugly, and they're hard to read. And as you get complicated examples, they become incredibly difficult to read. Um, but it's this very mechanical construction of like open paren, open brace, make your type alias with the uh, type argument you need, um, assign it equal to the thing that you're trying to partially apply with all of the, the, the um, concrete types stuck in and then project into that type alias, I'm sorry, into that um, structural type to pull out your alias. Um, so when in our code, when we're writing things like function one, int comma question mark, we're using um, a Scala compiler plugin called uh, Mac, I'm sorry, called a kind projector. Um, So it's kind projector here, it's from Eric Osheim, um, ex Philly guy. Uh, and it's just add support for that question mark syntax to Scala. And it just expands it into something very much like what we just wrote out manually. Uh, but like I said, there's there's certain limitations to what you can do, you know, or, or what he could do in the in the compiler plugin. Um, it turns out this question mark syntax is not actually rich enough to be able to uh, to do things like the f of g example. Um, so anytime you've got this question mark syntax, you could always write it as a type function instead. And we do type functions with the lambda keyword. So just like a regular function, uh, we define type parameters as our argument here. 
instead of value parameters. Um, and then, you know, we stick the things here, um, you know, into our type. So lambda here um, is the indication that what follows inside the brackets is a type function. Here's the input to the type function x, and here's our uh, thing that we're assigning it to.